Oh my gosh. This is like a dream day for me. <laughs> well, I don't think we're interested in the collection. There's one more card you might find a little impressive here. I think you know oh, that one. My gosh. Okay, so we're here in Orlando this morning. We got a lead on a great collection, uh, a gentleman named Josh, and he just wants to get out of the hobby and had a bunch of kind of semi-modern stuff, like 2005 and beyond. Only relics, only autos. It just felt like a good collection for us. We kind of worked out the details. So we're gonna go check this out and, and see if it makes sense for us to acquire the entire collection. All right, I tried to do a video earlier, but I'll try to be as quick as I can. Um, this is um, about seven. With many of these collections, we're basing trips and decisions on 90 second iPhone videos and random pictures, as you can see here. So many times we don't know what we're walking into, and it makes for quite the surprise as we open the door for the first time. Josh. Up, man? Hey, how's What's it going? Up? Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Going? Thanks Glad for having us. Yeah. Meet the crew. So my son Kai, Matt's son. Josh, Matt nice to meet you, man. Nice name, man. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You were messing around. Bro, it's a lot. I'm telling you, there's a ton. Here, there's everywhere, man. I've got it stacked up. I try to get it all like kind of out for y'all when y'all came, but oh my it, gosh. It, it, it wasn't possible. Like after I got through one box and put it on the table, I was like, Okay, yeah. Well, give me a lay of the lamp. What's going on here? All so this right, is so, stuff you pulled out of one box, you okay, said. Okay, yeah, so I ended up pulling out of one box. I pulled this out, and then I was like, okay, I don't have enough space, so I, I didn't know what I should do. But this <laughs> is probably the better stuff of some box, but I okay. see that there's no one-on-ones on this, so it's it's in here. There's, they're, they're just everywhere. So yeah, I, I mostly collected football. Yeah. A little bit of basketball I've been collecting for 25 years. <laughs> uh, I was a big Kobe fan, you know, okay. growing up. Uh, Knicks fan, Allen Houston. Which is really weird because when I was young, I collected yeah. all basketball. And then I switched over to football for is whatever it, reason. You don't know why? I don't know why. Like, I really love the Knicks and then the Giants. I started, you know, watching more Giants and stuff. Okay. And I started, I played basketball and football. And I guess I stopped mm. playing basketball and went to football. Okay. So then I guess that's where that came. This is incredible. You know, I, I saw some of the videos and the pictures that Josh had sent me before, and I knew it was going to be one of those collections that kind of pulled at my heartstrings because this is my era, like late 90s, early 2000s. But when you, you walk in, you see the table laid out, you see all of these awesome relics and autos, and this is just a fraction of all the cool stuff. I immediately got super excited. Okay, so you got, uh, is this this kind of scattered stuff? When we start looking through this, where, where do you, where should we focus our time? Okay, so, we can start opening it up. Actually, you know, this is why I wanted y'all to become because I'm not good at sorting or anything, but <laughs> I mean, I open a box and go through it, but yeah, there's a ton everywhere. So I know there's Brady's here, here on the table and there's one of ones. We just gotta go through it, man. We just gotta go through it. I, I'll help you and, and help you with it, but I try to get it as much as I could. This is like a dream day for me. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna go hunt, man. Just go hunt. Yeah, yeah. Why, why, why do you want to sell stuff? I mean, what's the deal? Okay, so it's more about like space. So I'm okay. selling my place in Mississippi. So I've got a place in Mississippi. Um, uh, I met my girlfriend, fiance, yep. and uh, you know we're just trying to make room, have kids, and stuff like that. So it's not necessarily needing the money; it's more about space and just trying to kind of yeah go down. Like I would love to stay collecting, you know, but I got onto a thing where you can only buy cards from what you sell, like no of the extra money. So boy, do we hear that a lot, especially these days after so many folks have been burned by the COVID rise and fall of sports cards. Josh seems to have a pretty good head on his shoulders and realizes that cards can easily get in between his relationships. No card is worth that much. What's what's kind of your favorite few cards in the collection? When you think about your collection, what's like the iconic? Ooh, ooh, okay. Did you mention Stafford to me yeah. when we were talking on the yeah. phone? Yep, yeah. I got a bunch of Staffords. I got a bunch of Staffords. Mainly I would say, Crazy enough is just like the stuff I've gotten personally signed from like Brett Favre because he lived in our town in Mississippi. Oh. So like that has more, like more meaning to me. I grew up in Mississippi and everywhere my dad was in the army. So we moved around a lot. 
Um, but when in Mississippi, I went to high school with Brett Favre's daughter and he was always in around town. So I'd always keep a card on me because we would always see him out, whether it be the grocery store or he'd, he'd go to a, um, this Mexican restaurant there. I would love to always ask that sign him. So I have a couple of his autographs on a on card. So it was pretty cool. And he was a pretty humble guy uh, in his later years. So it's cool to meet him. And it was neat going to school with his, his family. And he ended up coaching uh, our football team uh, the year after I left. So it's pretty neat. Everything you see on this table, I would say I pulled myself. Besides maybe three, four cards, I would say. Okay. Yeah, because I can see every every card that I'm looking at, I've pulled. That to me makes it even more special because it's like... This Besides, is... I take that back. The Eli Manning rookie did not pull that. Okay. I had to buy that. I tried to pull it, but I did buy that one. But everything else that I'm looking at, I pulled. Man, I had so much fun pulling boxes. It's just what I love to do. It's, yeah. It's just like when you put when you break open a pack, there's just nothing better, man. When you hit that like banger card. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's kind of like stocks. When you hit like a good stock, that's kind of like it when you're pulling a box. Because your full-time profession is yeah, stocks, yeah. right? Yep. yep, that's what I do for a living. I got into trading, uh, did really well. Fell flat on my face many a times until I finally got it and put together the tools to make money off of it but I run a group called Evolution Trading, uh, evolutiontrading.net, and I also uh, run a, a business called Trade Icon, tradeicon.com, and that's what I do besides loving sports and collecting sports, so. I've been doing that, that's, so that's how I got the money for it, to pull all the cards in the first place. Oh. So I did really good in stocks, and then, um, yeah, then I just kept going. So I'm digging this dude, Josh. Like, he just seems real. He seems like a down-to-earth guy who spent his own hard-earned money on packs he pulled all of this stuff on his own it just means more to me and i think it means more to him obviously because he's sweat and blood all went into this collection so i want to be cognizant of that as we're talking through this out of respect for kind of what he poured into it uh what what's the eras that we're looking at then so from early 2000s to yeah so ago? i would say i would say mostly we're looking at yeah 2000 to 2011 okay. but yeah most of the collection i would say I would say 80% is going to be the, the 2000 era. What I'm seeing right now, it's probably 90% football, which is great stuff. Don't get me wrong. And I, and I want to walk out with it, but I can't get too caught up on how cool the cards look. I need to remind myself that football cards don't carry as much value as you think in this hobby. So I need to be very wise here. But what kind of collections do you usually come into? We see, we see mostly vintage. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is why I, when you called the first, or sent the video, I said, Matt, <laughs> we got an actual modern collector that <laughs> yeah. pulled good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really love the this era because all the jersey cards you see are all game worn. Like right. the new era that you get, any jersey card you get, it's pretty much just crap. It's just yeah. um, something that's just like, they either put it on for an event or something that they just put from a cloth. The lower stuff, like nowadays, whenever you pull a one-on-one, it's gonna be on a sticker most of the time from Panini or anything mm -hmm. like that. And you get stickers, even the lower stuff in the press pass and stuff back in the yeah. day, they had them sign it on card. Like what can't you love about that yeah. in the back in the day? So that's that's just where the nostalgia is and they get it to sign actually on these things. Like in most things, I hate when you see like a one-on-one -on -one nowadays and it's on a sticker. It's like, why would you do that? You know? Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just. It doesn't make any sense, so. I'm with you. You know what I like, though, is the shine of refractors. Yeah. I see it glossing over the table. Yeah, inside. yeah, yeah. That's true. I, I do got a lot of those uh, in those boxes, man. There's so many uh, Topps Chrome refractors, Bowman refractors yeah. on the boxes, man. Yeah, see, like, this box is all numbered. It looks like base, but it's all numbered, and there's some autos. <laughs> I'm pulling, yeah, a lot of autos, and yeah, I guess a lot of autos. <laughs> Just unsleeved, that's horrible. So I am just oogling over some of these crazy cards like this 2009 Upper Deck Black Kurt Warner autograph is just insanely cool. I mean, number to, you know, number to 30. He's got so much of this, like the relics and the autos and some RPAs, low numbered stuff that is just, you don't see it all together so often. What, what's sticking out to you? Anything look super cool? You guys? Um. Uh, the autos, it's amazing. Yeah. Have you seen this many autos in one place before? Not really. What'll be the toughest part about you potentially seeing all this go? Will it be the oh. emotional attachment? Oh, for sure. Definitely hard seeing it go, but uh, I guess I'm ready. 
So you got multiple Steph Curry rookies. So you found these in uh, one of your... Yeah, recently, yeah, not too long ago. So I was actually just going through a box of base. Uh, I collect a lot of the 09 year, and there's probably more in there. Yeah. And this jersey, Steph Curry, I literally found that a couple weeks ago. All right, so we've been in there for almost two hours now, and I think I've digested just about everything there. Went through most of the boxes. The, the stuff on the floor is mainly commons. Uh, the stuff on the tables, pretty good stuff. I mean, there's a lot of players that aren't gonna move in this market, but there's a ton of players that will. Um, I, I think I'm to the point now where I wanna try to buy everything. Um, so I think he wants to sell everything. There is an emotional attachment, but I'm hoping I can go back in there and find a way to walk out with everything today. So what the number is going to be, I'm going to probably throw out around $15,000. I think he's going to settle a little closer to 20, uh, just kind of picking up things as we're talking. But I guess we'll see. Uh, I, I think 15 would be a really solid number for us because I'm putting somewhere around $25,000 to $30,000 in value on, on, in that room today. So um, I'm really hoping to negotiate one of these curries with him um, so I could trade it with my brother and get some cards that I really want. So, yeah. I didn't really find stuff because I'm more of a basketball guy, but I found two cards. I found a Kobe Bryant rookie and then an Obi Toppin, which my, my little brother likes Obi Toppin, so I was thinking I could trade him to get some cards that I like. Just going through this stuff, yeah. it, seeing stuff that I haven't seen, it's just... So I really appreciate y'all coming as well. So awesome. it's, been, it's been awesome for me as, as well. So well, thank, thank you. you so much. Well, I don't think we're interested in the collection. Uh, I, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I did all this. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're, I, really, I really hope we can, I want to buy it all no. if, if possible. Hey, uh, but before I do any of that, uh, these two dudes pulled out some stuff. I think they want to see if all they right. can negotiate with you on. Are you cool with that? Yeah, let's see what they got. What were you thinking? I was thinking like ten dollars for both. I, I don't even know if, to be honest, I would do five because I, five. I don't yeah because I don't know much about that Obi top and I don't think that's maybe like one or two. Yeah. Now the Kobe, yeah maybe ten. We'll do five. Five right. for it. You go too hard on it. But what were you thinking? I'm gonna be a little bit tougher on you. You look like you got some Pikachu's, and, <laughs> so you, you you're gonna be a little bit different. Yeah. So I got two Pokemon cards here. Just right. Pikachu and uh, nice. I believe. Um, I also got the Stephen Curry rookie. All right, nice. Yeah. Uh, what, you, what you thinking? Maybe 75 to 100 around there. I think that's, dang, I wanted to come at you hard, but I actually think that's really fair. Um, yeah, I think I think 75 is fair, to be honest. I think that's very fair. I would definitely do that deal. 75? Yeah. Yep. Thanks so much, man. That's awesome. I, I was wanting to come at them hard, but I, I like I was wanting to barter and stuff. But I mean, they're fair. They're fair. Good. good awesome. Kids. They, well, yeah. the fact that you got Pokemon is a good deal for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anytime yeah. we could come and Kai walks away with Pokemon, it's a good day. Yeah, it is. I'm glad I, I got them Pokemon too. Man. All right. So I, I want everything. Like I love this stuff. I almost love it too much. Yeah. I, it's just so. <laughs> it's it's that nostalgia. It's got the yeah. yeah. There's good stuff here. I had to pop a lot, so I'm glad you like it. Yeah. I, I struggle a little bit with like the exclusivity of football. Yeah. I'm, I'm not as it. much of a football guy, but I got it. But I, you just have so much good stuff. Yeah. yeah when you told me you showed me videos, I was yeah. thinking. Oh, okay. It can't be all this good. Yeah, yeah. And it's mainly all this good. Yeah, it really is. There's a lot. There's so a lot. I, I kind of landed, like, I think the value somewhere between 28 and 30. Yeah. I was hoping to pay, like, 17.5. Okay. See, I, I was thinking the value, if you could, if you wanted to consign this or okay. if you just wanted to sell it, it's going to take a lot of time. I was thinking more, like, realistically, like, around 22. Okay. Maybe 20, yeah, 22 around that range. 22, so 22 so we're close. for, yeah, so everything here for 22? Yeah. Okay, would you do, would you just make it nice and simple, like an even 20? Anytime we're negotiating, the goal is to make sure both parties end up happy. That usually means both of us end up a little uncomfortable. In Josh's case, we felt he would ultimately settle for $20,000, so we tossed out some lower numbers to make sure it felt good to land on that number. I was really wanting 22, just that little bit extra, but I think 20 makes sense. I mean, it's just- You cool with even, 20? Yeah, I mean, it's an even number. It's kind of perfect. And I think that makes us both walk away happy. Okay. 
Well, deal. deal. 20K. All right, man. All right, brother. Uh, hey, man, I'm happy. I was telling these guys it's cool buying a collection where someone actually pulled cars themselves. Yeah, yeah. See, that's what's crazy. 99% of this, yeah. I pulled these from boxes. So I had the joy of pretty much opening all these. I didn't have much of like buying what I wanted. Yeah. I just liked the excitement of ripping them open. And, you know, it's just, there's nothing better almost than Heck that, yeah. you know. All right, so we just got the deal done and I am stoked. I know the boys are stoked too. Uh, some really cool relics, some really cool autos, just a different collection for us. And I think the buyers that I'm, I'm used to dealing with are gonna love scooping up some of this stuff. And frankly, the, the timing I think worked out really well for Josh. He's at a parallel in his life, uh, getting ready to get married, he's looking at having kids, and I think the money's gonna go to some useful things in his life. And I'm glad we were able to connect all of this. Right timing for him, right timing for us. This weather is great though, so enjoy it while you're here. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's your next trip? Uh, good question. My wife's having a baby, so I'm stopping for a couple months. Oh. All right, There's we'll nothing really true. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. There is nothing true. <laughs> yeah, I've learned that. All right, Josh. Have a good one. After wrapping up with Josh, we started our journey over to Boca Raton to check out the guys at SGC. But I could tell just by looking at the boys, they were tired and they needed a little pick me up. So I booked us some time at K1 Racing to let out some energy. All right, so we're here in Boca Raton, Florida, enjoying the beautiful blue skies, the sunshine, uh, the palm trees. We're getting ready to meet Peter Steinberg, CEO of SGC, good friend of mine. Uh, hopefully we're gonna grab a quick coffee and go see the headquarters here in a second as well. So who is this SGC, you might ask? We do talk about them a lot in our episodes because we think they're one of the most impressive grading companies in the sports card industry. 22 years ago, they built their stripes by grading vintage and doing it very well. They weathered the storms of the hobby and three years ago, they were able to explode their growth rates and many now consider them to be the number two grading company in the world. So we're here to lift up the hood and see what's really happening at SGC. I'm not someone who necessarily needs it. I'm pretty, uh pretty energetic guy, yeah. sometimes even maybe to a fault. I'm pretty hyped up, definitely passionate about obviously what we do in SGC, but um, to get my mornings going, it, it doesn't hurt to have one of these. So, so how does your wife handle, I mean, you, you're always nonstop. Whenever I talk, you're in the middle of something, you're popping out. I mean, she's a saint, because honestly, I mean, she knows the rule is, you know, to a certain degree, of course, barring any emergencies, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of off limits. When I'm in the office, I am in the zone. I mean, you'll never see me in anything but a big black SGC polo and some, some blue jeans, because to me, it's almost like my, my SGC suit. When I have this on, that's who I am. So I think she really helps sometimes put things in perspective of kind of, you know, when I read a comment that's not as friendly to, to what we're doing, or even me personally, you know, she'll always be there to remind me kind of, you know, what Take we've accomplished, what we have in front of us. Yeah. And, and um, quite literally, I don't know how I would have done this without that support. That's awesome. It's a, it's, it's a lot, but it's, I couldn't ask for anything else. Heck yeah. yeah. So tell me a little bit about your journey as a collector. You know, a lot of times we don't see that side of you because we, we see right. the face of SGC, but I mean, you were a collector as a kid, man. You didn't even yeah. I was, uh, I collected, everyone collected, what's cool about the hobby is you could be two years apart from someone and have such a different experience in, sure. in cards and in ripping cards. For example, imagine someone who joined the hobby in, you know, 2018 to someone who joined the hobby in 2020 yeah. to someone who joins the hobby today. It's like three different hobbies there. I grew up in this time when memorabilia cards were a very new phenomenon. So to have a relic of a player to me was the coolest thing ever. I had zero appreciation for vintage, none whatsoever. I thought it was weird. I thought it was what the old guys do. I thought it was bizarre. And um, 
boy, is that change, that has changed, <laughs> you know, huh? with some education, really. Yeah. And, and I think what it opened my eyes up to is just how much, um, just how important that education is. Sure. I was the only one that was into the hobby as far <laughs> as my friends. And you didn't have this sense of community yeah. that you did today. I mean, Instagram didn't exist, you know. You'd find a few box breaks on YouTube, but nothing like today with content creators like yourself. So one of the things that I think is bubbling up a lot recently in the hobby is just this idea of trust. You're forging this whole new face of the hobby with younger guys that are doubling down on just being guys of integrity. I think when it comes to trust, especially as a grading company, there is just such a, an elevated expectation and, and um, it's just not, it's not given trust. I mean, mm. it's something that even SGC and I happen to feel that we've been really hopefully everyone else feels doing it the right way and being as transparent as we possibly can. But look, that's why that's why we're sitting down right now, Ty, yeah. because I think that it's so important to continue to build that trust. I'll tell you what, um, why don't we go check it out? Can we go? We could definitely go, man. Let's I got do some it. cool cards I'll show you. It'll be a lot of fun. All right, awesome, All right, man. Awesome, man. Go. Like 2020, what was average orders per day versus like when it exploded? Yeah, look, man, I'm <laughs> rapid is an understatement and, and I don't think the word growth does it justice either. I mean, it was quite literally overnight, just a nearly a, it, it had to have been a 10x increase of, of volume. And wow. that must have taken place over the course of about seven or so days. A lot of times in this hobby, you run into people who you could tell they don't have any history in the hobby. That is not the case with Peter. You can tell everything that he brings up comes from conviction and excitement because he just loves being in this hobby. Which one out of these these six would you take? Uh, which one? Which one would you want for your own collection? Values aside? Right, values aside, yeah. I think the Mahomes is just like so, I mean, values aside, of course. Yeah. Um, I mean, Mahomes is 99 of 99, true RPA is is something special. I mean, how do you not go with the Brady, and the Brady Championship ticket, obviously, but. This looks so good in a tuxedo. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, <laughs> look, we agree. We, we, we agree with you. And there's one more card you might find a little impressive here. I think you know oh, that one. My gosh. The perks of working at SGC, for sure. How many higher grades than this 7.5? Not many, not many. I mean, obviously the the, the, the king in SGC land is the, the 9.5. Yeah, it just sold for 12.6 million. This weekend, a baseball card of the New York Yankees player sold for 12.6 million dollars yesterday. The rookie card was on the market for more than a month before being sold yesterday. This is incredible, $12.6 million. You know, we, we do have, uh, I believe wow. we have one or two nines. I think it's two nines, um, a few eights, and you know, seven five is right up there. I mean, anything even over like six five on a mantle it's just oh, stupid exactly. it's mind-blowing so well man your personal collection is impressive <laughs> yeah I, I i wish i wish these kinds of cards it doesn't matter how long you've been yeah. here it doesn't matter you know how often you're around them they've got to have an effect on you and so these were in the building and these are definitely some special ones Man, this is special. Like pulling back the curtains and seeing the inner workings of SGC, the trust that they're giving us, it just feels really, really impressive. A lot of these things that we're seeing, like I've always wondered about and now seeing them kind of hands-on in front of me, the trust that Peter's showing us means a lot to me and I can't wait to see the rest of this process laid out. I say it all the time. I was a collector who was lucky enough to get a job with a grading company and then I was very lucky and fortunate to to actually have a say in how yeah. we do things. And imagine, imagine Ty, you were given the same opportunity, you'd probably make decisions very similarly to the way I make decisions, which is what's best for the hobby? Right. What do our supporters want? What are our detractors saying? What don't they like about us most? 
I can promise you that a lot of folks out there that assume that this is just, you know, impossible, it, it's not. You treat people right, you, you legitimately make them feel appreciated and that you, um, you know, you, you value their support. They, they feel that. And I think that that's what we're seeing here at SGC right now. All right, so where do I sign? I'm all in. Job application. You give it to me. <laughs> I love cards. <laughs> cards cards are really, really cool. And I think that the hobby, what's so cool is that cards have always been cool. In my opinion, the hobby wasn't always so cool. Mm. And I think that what's really cool now is that the hobby is catching up to the, I guess, the, the substance. How incredibly complex and, and interesting everything is. And... Um, you know, it's just really cool to see that maturation process, I guess, where yeah. we can really shine a light on how cool this stuff is. So I'm a big, uh, big collector for life. That's for sure. Well, man, SGC is in good hands. Thank you. You are impressive. This is something to behold. We're not going to be able Thanks. to capture everything that we saw, but I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed, man. Thank you so much for having us. Anytime, man. Thank yeah. you. It means a lot. Cool. Awesome. Man. Awesome. The attention to detail that SGC shows at every step of the way is extremely impressive. I wish we could show some of these things as there's some areas that we can't get the camera in there, but I'm just really impressed with how diligent they are. And a lot of things that we typically think are complicated, they've simplified it. There's a lot of common sense being integrated into all their processes. It just makes sense. I think that's what's the most impressive of everything that I've seen here today at SGC. What a great couple days in sunny South Florida. Pulling back the curtains and seeing what's happening at SGC was enlightening. It helped us appreciate even more the type of business they're running. We also had the chance to get to know Josh and close the deal on a football collection that rivals almost any in recent memory. You'll probably notice a common thread between Josh and Peter is the hobby's love for old school relics and autographs. A piece that didn't feel as watered down 20 years ago. It's probably why I felt like I couldn't resist the collection. You can find these and so many more in our eBay store. Links are right here. We're so excited to see where the next phone call or text message takes us. Maybe it's your collection we're coming to see. Don't forget to check out some of our other great episodes right here. And most of all, keep chasing.